To celebrate Star Trek's 50th anniversary, we're going to show you how to build a working comm badge using Adafruit Circuit Playground. The accelerometer will detect when the board is being tapped and plays the sound effect through the onboard speaker. To build this project, we'll need the circuit playground, a LiPo battery, and a magnet. The rest of the parts will be CNC machined and 3D printed. I designed the parts around the circuit playground board using Autodesk Fusion 360. The two parts for the comm badge will be machined and the mounting plate will be 3D printed. I used the cam features to generate the toolpath for machining the two parts. We'll need to face our material and use a few pockets, some contours, and some chamfers. To machine our parts, I'll be using the other mill desktop CNC. For the base plate, I want to use this 360 brass, which has a really nice color to it, and it's supposed to be pretty easy to machine. For the triangle shape, I'm going to use aluminum, which is lightweight and should look pretty nice when it's cut and polished. To secure the material to the spoil board, I'm going to use Nitto tape, which is an industrial grade, double-sided tape. I need to make sure the material is placed on the lower left side of the bed and try to be as square as possible. For the first procedure, we'll face the material and make it the desired thickness of our part. I'm using a 1 8 inch flattened mill with a step down of 0.07 millimeters. This is pretty conservative since I don't want to be so aggressive on our tool. Once that's done, we're left with a lot of swarf. This is the fine chips that are produced for machining. The next procedure I'm running is called the pocket. This will create the cavity necessary for our base part. You'll notice the toolpath generates these concentric patterns, and this can be removed with a bit of polishing after it's done. So once that's complete, I'll run the contour. This will create the outline of our final shape. The last job I'll do is a chamfer, and to do that, I'll need to switch out the tool for an engraving bit. This has an 80 degree edge with a really fine tip. And we can use this to create a chamfer along the inside of the base part. And with all that done, now I can remove the stock from the spoil board. We can do this with a thin spatula to get underneath the material. There was a bit of material left over, but it was pretty easy to pry off the stock. And now we have our base part, which looks pretty clean and has a really nice shine. Next, I'll get the aluminum ready for machining, again using double-sided netto tape. For the triangle piece, I'm running a pocket procedure using a 132 inch flattened mill. This is a thinner tool, which allows us to cut those corners in the shape. After that, I'll switch the tool out for the 1 8 inch flattened mill for cutting out the contour. The last thing I'll do is a chamfer, again using the 80 degree engraving bit, but this time on the outer edge of the shape. I ended up popping the stock off the spoil board, but no damage was done. A thin layer of material was left over, but again, it was easy to pry off the part. So this looks really good and it came out pretty clean. So here are the two parts looking nice and shiny. A quick test fit shows how the triangle can be inserted into the cutout on the base. So to remove the patterns from the machining process, I'll need to polish them using a rotary tool and some polishing wheels. 
A few passes with the Scotch-Brite wheel shows how you can remove these machining lines. Then I used a buffing wheel to give the surface a mirror finish. To secure two pieces, I used a piece of double-sided scotch tape, which actually works pretty well. Next, I'll grab the code for the Circuit Playground board. The sketch can be found in the examples dropdown, which comes with the Circuit Playground Arduino library. I'll comment out the include for the Super Mario coin sound and use the Star Trek communicator noise instead. The sound effect is already converted into binary for us. In the setup, the accelerometer range is pre-configured and we can adjust the sensitivity by changing the value in the set Excel tap line. And that's pretty much all we need to change. Next, I'll 3D print the mount for the Circuit Playground board in PLA. The standoffs on the mount have these little pegs that snap into the holes on the Circuit Playground. Some of the components like the buttons and the JST connector are a little bit tall, so the standoffs will give the mount that extra clearance. I also 3D printed a custom metal backing using steel fill, which is a PLA with steel iron. So this is actually magnetic. I'll use some more double stick tape to secure the back of the mount to the back of the com badge, which actually holds pretty good. So now I can use a neodymium magnet to secure it to my shirt. This LiPo battery will power the board for about an hour and it's small enough to hide behind the badge. You'll notice the red LED will blink whenever it detects it's being tapped. And that's it. Now we have a really sweet looking com badge with working sound effects. I noticed the size of the badge lines up pretty close to the one that's printed on my Star Trek t-shirt. Now to wear it, all we need to do is place the magnet underneath your shirt and place the badge over it. My favorite thing about this project is that there's no soldering required. All of the components are already on the board, and that's what makes Circuit Playground a really nice platform for all sorts of projects. Plus, it's only $20. Hey, if you guys like this project, we have a full set of plans and documentation linked below. So be sure to check that out if you want to make your own. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you're subscribed for more projects from all of us here at Adafruit.